Good morning, everyone. Today is June 8th. It's 7.16 in the morning, and I am driving home from work. I really didn't feel like making a podcast this week, and as you know, I've really been slacking lately. I just, I've just kind of been taking a step back and spending time with my family since school got out. But I kind of wanted to take, make a podcast and talk about uh, one of the moms who has shared her daughter's struggle with addiction on uh, TikTok. She goes by the real Melissa. And I've been following her for quite a while and her daughter's story, Angel, and tragically, Angel lost her battle with addiction a few days ago. I had literally seen Melissa make a video the day before she announced that Angel had passed, uh, talking about how she had relapsed and and you know her frustrations with that and I can't tell you how many videos like that I have made you know we've been through numerous relapses and I know Melissa had too and you know she talked about how Angel she thought this was it Angel had six months of sobriety and she had been home with her mom and doing really good and then sadly she went and hung out with friends and she relapsed and she relapsed hard you can go literally from one day talking about your frustrations with addiction and the relapse to the next day talking about how you had to withdraw care on your daughter It's tragic. She had tagged me in her video, and I'm I'm glad she did. I really had not been on social media much. And I was on my way to work night shift, and I had gotten coffee, and I happened to log into my account and saw the tag, and I went to watch it, and I couldn't even finish watching the video. I, I just started crying. My heart is just, it is just breaking for her and for everyone who has lost a loved one to this. In the three and a half years that I've been sharing, I've had so many families, uh, primarily moms, who lost their child to addiction. And they told me, they're like, you think you can prepare yourself and for, for that call, but you're really not prepared. And I mean, because when you get that call, there is no longer hope. All hope is gone. Angel was 20 years old, had just turned 20, so young. And now her mom has to lay her to rest. Fortunately, So many people have come together and have been able to donate to a GoFundMe that was created to help pay for the funeral expenses. And hopefully it'll allow Melissa to get, take some time off from her job to grieve. Prior to learning of this, I had actually taken my 
my main TikTok page down. I had just deactivated it and I had planned on deactivating it the entire month of June and have questioned doing it and it, you know, for forever. <laughs> Social media can be so toxic at times. And I, I really wanted to take a step back, spend some time with my family. And I didn't tell anybody I was deactivating it. And I had had, I didn't, de- I, I had like a backup page I had not deactivated. And uh, I was getting emails from it because people were thinking I blocked them or, you know, they weren't sure what had happened if my account had gotten banned. So I went on that account and had posted a couple of videos just kind of explaining that I was taking a break. But when Melissa attacked me in that video, I felt like I needed to make a video on my main account and share her. It's, it's one of the most real videos I think you can watch her sharing about her daughter and having to withdraw care. I think so many people who are struggling with addiction, so many who are in recovery that, you know, are, you know, possibly on the verge of a relapse need to see that because that is the reality of the suffering families go through. And any of us could get that call at any time. You know, there's not a lot of people who share their stories, especially loved ones, families, parents, um, because there's just a lot of stigma surrounding us speaking out, even though we may do it in a just very real way. I've always tried to humanize the addict. And I believe Melissa has very much done the same. And I hope more people will start sharing because this impacts so many. And it's not easy, you guys. It's not easy to go and just start putting your personal business out there. <laughs> I, don't, I do not talk about my social media when I am not on social media unless somebody brings it up to me. And I have a pretty large following. And I guess I'm pretty oblivious. I think more people know about my social media at my work than I thought did. They just don't say anything to me. They just all talk amongst each other, (laughs) just in some information that has gotten back to me. And, you know, so it's, it's, it's challenging at times that the good thing is the people who really need to know about my social media, as far as my bosses and things like that, they, they know. And, uh, and I, I really am just trying to bring awareness, but lately I've felt so numb. This is the most numb I think I've felt maybe ever when it, since my daughter's, this, this story started and it it makes it hard when I'm feeling that way to really make content and I kind of feel like I don't have anything to talk about or share or even really any emotion to show. And it wasn't until I saw Melissa's video and found out about Angel dying that I've really cried lately. If you can pray for Melissa, 
Please do. If anybody listening to this has donated to the GoFundMe, thank you so much for doing that. I I know that she is completely, she is so grateful. And we had texted some a couple days ago and, and she told me she was just overwhelmed with the amount of love and support that she has received. But this is going to be a short podcast. I just kind of wanted to share that information with you guys. And that if you're struggling with addiction, please try to get help if you can. There are, there are many options out there. Even if it's outpatient, you don't necessarily need inpatient. If you want to get sober, you can do it. It's going to be hard, but you can do it. And if you're, if you're on a verge of relapse, I'm telling you, don't do it. Go as deep as you can within and find the fucking strength to not relapse. Too many lose their lives when they relapse. That is the common story that I hear and I see in my job. I can't, I have seen definitely an uptick in uh, overdoses coming to the ICU. And you know, you don't think that it could be you, but every time you use, you're at risk of becoming a statistic. All right, you guys, take care.